All right, guys, it's time for Mr. Asarata's ReZero Season 3 Episode 7 cut content. Also, congratulations to 20,000 subs. That's a milestone. Uh, guys, go check this channel out. Let's get it. This week's ReZero episode was one of the most anticipated scenes of the arc from many novel readers, as well as my attempt at explaining why I don't think a now highly popular fan theory of Al equals Subaru is the case. Mm. How well did it hold up? Let's talk about it. Okay. We see what Al's side of the mirror looked like, and this is actually an anime original scene, as he uses the mirror and Amelia picks up and Amelia treats it as not so significant. Al seems to be a bit stunned at the person on the other end, as Amelia passes on the information she has gathered about their locations, but Al tries to stop her. You don't have to try so hard, you know? Being a captured princess and all, don't be reckless. It's okay to want Natsuki Subaru to save you, but Amelia clears up a misconception of his. She never had any doubt about Subaru coming to save her. She's doing she everything wants to be she useful. can to make it easier for him. Al Dabron confirms he will relay the message, and Amelia is sure she will. Why is she sure? She doesn't know. Because the familiarity with Subaru and Al, that's why she feels, you know, sure about it. And the tone, the speech pattern, the way Al talked, something about that was very uncanny. Again, it could be me walking backwards and trying to reverse engineer this theory that Al is, you know, Subaru. And that's why I'm convincing myself that it sounds similar, but something was off there. Something about him reminded her of Subaru, almost. Now I know what you're thinking, because everyone is thinking it. Al equals Subaru, uh, especially with the face reveal at the end there. Mm. I would like to push back on this idea, but I'm going to save it for later in the video. I don't necessarily think that Subaru needs to be Al, or vice versa. But even if we go with the notion that Al is not Subaru from like a different timeline, I think it's still possible that, like, what, what is it? Someone that's trying to be like Subaru? How about that? I don't know. I feel like there is still this uncanny relationship between Al and Subaru. And even if Al is not Subaru from a different timeline, maybe there's some other ways that we can creatively think of why the similarities exist. Where I find it more appropriate, and I want us to keep in mind what he said to Amelia in this conversation to essentially resign to her fate and wait for someone else to do everything. Put a pin in that for now. Al enters the room. Like, his Al's, the way that Al was talking reminded me of how Roswell was trying to convince Subaru to only have one thing and only one thing to care about, right? And I, that's why I thought that Al was, you know, the Subaru that was taking the dark timeline. And that's why he's also telling Amelia to, like, yeah, don't worry about it. You just, you know, stay, stay there and I'll save you and stuff like that. There was also the scene here, which is the anime-only cut content, right? Where it pretty much confirms that Al was the one that blooded Pristilla, right? Because if you think about the timeline of events, there's a bunch of cult members dead. But you, you also see a steering wheel there. The steering wheel might have been, you know, the gates opening and then a cult member showed up and then he attacked them and then he picked up the media and if you think about that the flooding into Amelia eventually picking up the phone call it makes sense to me I'm telling them about a message he received from Amelia and Garfield also enters crying and making a mess of himself as Subaru tries to calm him down Al asks about the broadcast meteor and Subaru tells him it's their trump card for winning the city over Wrath's authority is putting everyone on edge and the embers of slaughter are smoldering and the plan is to turn Wrath's authority on its head. They need to inspire hope. Anna is worried, however. If opening the floodgate was an act akin to retaliation, what if they do something even worse in response? Subaru, however, disagrees. Lust was not at the floodgate that opened, yet it still did. How okay. would that be possible? Al. Anastasia wonders if not breaking the meteor was part of their plan, and Al cuts in with a husky voice, saying, This part of the story is very convenient for us. But if you, I guess, think about the personality traits of the Archbishops, maybe it makes sense. If like, oh, they just left it on because that's how absolutely confident they are and they don't even see us as threats. They don't have a reason for anything. They don't care one bit about anything we do. They've never lost. And they've never even considered the possibility. And how would you know all that, Al? Sounds like you have a lot of history with them. Anna changes her mind, voting for a broadcast, and, and Subaru says that Anna should do it, but she says that she isn't good enough at this kind of thing. What about Krush? Well, she's brain dead. What about Julius? He can't do it. And Garfield asks, why can't Subaru do it? Anastasia and Julius both agree, and he can't help but wonder, how badly can you overestimate someone? And I think that already shows so much growth, right? His awareness that he is not worthy enough to deliver the speech, even though everyone else is pushing them to be. He had felt this way before as well when interacting with Wilhelm and Krush and Reinhardt. They were misunderstanding who he was. They were badly mistaken. They were all far more worthy of praise. They worked far, far harder than he did. The way they all praised Subaru, reached out to him, and treated him as a friend as if it were the obvious thing to do, that always tormented him. And that's the really funny part. It torments him. He thinks he's not, you know, deserving. Because in his perspective, he isn't deserving. 
He's constantly failed over and over again and barely managed to get here. But to everyone else in the perfect timeline where Subaru succeeds and just performs miracles like Jesus Christ, that's why they place him on a pedestal like this, which then makes Subaru feel bad as he has such a high set of standards for himself. It made him anxious. He was sure that at any moment his real self would slip out and he would end up disappointing them. Garfield, Anastasia, and Julius were all expecting so much from Subaru. Even though he was always so desperate, always on the verge of being crushed under the weight of their expectations, they were adding more and more to the load, as if desperation was not enough. That was the path Natsuki Subaru walked. Somewhere along the way, he realized he couldn't just stay Amelia's hero. He needed to... Everyone's hero. That's when Al cuts him. If you're not sure, you can leave it be. Causing Garfield to explode in anger, asking what he knows about his captain. Al bites back. Is saying Captain's supposed to cast some sort of magic spell? Is that the name of some Superman that can solve any problem? He points out how hard he is leaning on Subaru, asking if he is really that special. Hmm. Garf could beat him in a brawl, and when it comes to smarts, he can't beat Anastasia and Julius. If only he could just put the whole world on his shoulders and keep on rolling, now that would be something to see. Just what would you want from the star at center stage, Al says, as he points to himself and Subaru. Your average background character can't carry that kind of weight. You ever think of how he must feel? Everything that Al was saying to dissuade Subaru made it sound like a projection of his failures from a different life or a different timeline, and that's why he's trying to prevent Subaru. Again, I'm walking backwards of Alice Subaru theory, but it really felt like how he's lived all through all these personal experiences, and he's trying to prevent a similar thing from happening. He turns to Subaru, asking if Amelia is the most important thing to him right now, because to him, he's going to do what he can for Priscilla and leave and that's the part where I talked about the parallels with Roswell's theory, sorry, ideology of sacrificing everything for just one single thing to protect. Everything else for later. If he can protect her, himself, and Schultz, that's enough for him. He remarks how the- What a fucking hypocrite, though. You didn't go to Priscilla at all. You left to do your own shady shit behind the scenes when you said you're gonna go see Priscilla. You still haven't made contact with Priscilla. Cultists are just vermin that'll pop up against somewhere else, even if you go out of your way to exterminate them. Demons that come back to haunt you. Subaru, however, has an incredibly thoughtful response, and one that only Aldebron could understand. He can't run away. Why? He wouldn't need a reason to pull a kid back to the sidewalk if they wandered out on a red light. He yeah. wouldn't even think twice. IRL experience, right? A red light? The fuck is a red light to the people of ReZero, but you know, to the brothers of Beyond the Great Waterfall. It's just like a traffic light, so it's just like an instinctual, heroic instinct, right? Where you want to save somebody, and you don't question yourself, it's just a natural thing to do. Al warns him, if he does this, he will carry the full weight of those heroic reveries. You can't afford to lose. You Heroic delusions here, right? You have to win. You'll be fighting while carrying everyone's hopes and expectations, all while leading to some happy future. Subaru's response? Not being able to afford to lose is how it's always been for him. Mm -hmm. He'll do it. He'll play And the fact that I'll propose this kind of thing of like, it's not just you anymore. You taking an L, it's, it's not enough. Everyone will be the taking L with you if you go with down this heroic delusion path. And remember how I've been saying, like, does Al maybe have an authority similar to Return by Death, and that's how he knew in advance of all this different shit happening regarding the Pristilla 10? Mm, I'm not sure. It's just, like, if he truly knew this kind of Return by Death ability, there's no way he would have ever, you know, challenged Subaru with this kind of notion that, like, hey, bro, like, this is it. Like, you're, everyone else is also going to go down with you. Are you fine with this? But it's, like, that's the path we've been walking since the very beginning with Return by Death. Play the role of a hero and find his resolve. Now, let me be clear. Even if I weren't the number one Aldebron Glazer, this moment is incredible. You have this repeated mention of heroic reveries from Al, and a remark in the narration about Subaru's real self being exposed. Is heroic delusion uh, a less accurate term compared to heroic reverie that, you know, Asarata is using? I'm sure that it's just, you know, they're, they're all synonyms to a degree, right? But sounds like uh, he's a pretty sweaty person regarding the source material, so maybe heroic reverie is a more accurate way of depicting, you know, this episode rather than heroic delusion. I have this repeated mention of heroic reveries from Al and a remark in the narration about Subaru's real self being exposed, and it gives us a clue into Subaru's current mentality. Subaru is still someone that doesn't love himself, because of course you can't just flip like that. Subaru did learn to treat himself with respect in Arc 4, but it's much harder for that lesson to sink in to who you really are. Subaru isn't working to protect himself, but in a way, he's working to protect the heroic Everyone image else. of Natsuki Subaru, a visage overlaid on top of him, a method of projection onto a different entity. And we see this when he accepts that he has a lot to shoulder. A core message of Arc 4 was that he can't do this, as Otto and the others came to his rescue, but now in Arc 5, for him, it's always been this way. 
thinking about how he can't just be Amelia's hero anymore. How far will Subaru's heroism take him, and how true will Al's words become? Aldebron reports a cautionary tale to Subaru. Heroism will crush him. Those reveries will break his back, and no matter what he does, the witch cult will pop back up. How is he so sure of this though, right? It's just very telling to me that Al is talking from personal experience. There is a lot of suspicion about Al, and a lot of commenters keep pointing out about how he has a lot of similarities to Subaru. Therefore, Al equals Subaru. I disagree, however. I think Al's nonchalant attitude about how nothing is his problem anymore, and how he should only purely focus on the one in front of him, is supposed to paint a symbolic similarity to Subaru, not a literal one. Aldebron isn't literally Subaru. He is Subaru who has given up on heroism. Mm. Who has given up on everything but a singular solitary goal, something that Roswell tried to instill in Subaru. Exactly, I'm glad he brought that up. This is the exact mentality Roswell is trying to set Subaru to do before straight bed happens. And that's why we're seeing Al right after Arc 4. It's because Al is supposed to represent that version of Subaru that could have mm. existed, not Al. So, okay, I'm perfectly fine with going with the notion that Al is not Subaru, but all the similarities and shit is supposed to be, you know, all the things that Subaru might have gone, if not, you know, him walking down this path. But then the identity, what is with the, what's up with the similarities with the eye? What's up with him being also from Japan? And I'm not, and, and I, there's other Isekai characters in Japan, but like, what's up with him being the same height as Subaru? What's up with him losing an arm while we lost a leg? What's up with the scar on his arm? The placement there with the scars from the old Grom, you know, the wolves that, the uh, hellhounds that we face in Arc 2. Maybe the scar position isn't the same, but a lot of people are making note of this scar right here and saying, is this some Arc 2 shit? What's up with his eyes? What's up with his familiarity with Biako's nickname? What's up with his reaction to Amelia showing up at the end? All of these things are why people are trying to, you know, just say that Al is Subaru. And for sure, I can be fine with Asarata's opinion of, you know, the whole symbolism aspect of everything that Subaru could have been is now represented in Al. But the, the identity, it's just, there's so many different points that just makes me think that Al is Subaru, right? Because this is the... Either this is the most, most troll and dedicated misdirection of all time, or what is this? Actually be him. That's why he also passes that advice to Amelia. Just give up and let Subaru save you. Because that's how things should be. Do you think if Al were really Subaru, he would be able to stomach watching Amelia be taken hostage? Stomach anything about Amelia at all? And because in this timeline, I guess he's more dedicated towards Priscilla than Amelia. And in that aspect, maybe I could agree with that. And, you know, be so firmly on Priscilla's side instead. Yeah, why not? It's a great story. Maybe he was so traumatized in a different timeline of being so obsessed with Amelia and losing it where now he wants nothing to do with it. Rather than trying to have a second chance to save Amelia, he just doesn't want to go down that path again and he's turned his back and now he's letting Subaru here handle it while he's going Priscilla. That's definitely more mental gymnastics to kind of like, you know, go against that narrative. We have two people with very similar circumstances, but two different paths. Al clearly has a very rough go in this world, having experience with the witch cult and up to something in the city, but has given up on the path that Subaru now walks. This is why him being isekai is such necessary information and what makes it so frustrating, it was only placed in a break time and not organically included mm -hmm. in the season. Subaru steps up to the meteor, an initially gloomy silent shelter, feeling a faint seed of hope when Subaru cuts in, only to have it be crushed when he tells him it's not solved yet. He inspires hope in the funniest part was, yeah, when he started calling, everyone already was, like, hopeful. It was like, wow, someone else is talking through the broadcast. Wait, yeah, well, maybe we're already saved. Yay, yay! And the super's like, wait, 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 we're still fucked. And I was like, aww. In a unique way by telling them to think of others, to look the other people in the shelter in the eye, and to understand that none of them are alone, and that could be your greatest strength. Yeah. He appealed to their normalcy. He's just a regular guy, being tossed around by this crazy situation just like all of them on the verge of being crushed by the madness of it all. He's weak, he's scared, his knees are going to buckle even making this announcement, but he won't give up. As long as he has his friends, his comrades, he won't do anything he can to stop them. He wants to run away, but he can't. He wants to cry, but he can't just cry. He doesn't want to lose, so he'll fight. He'll fight to prove to the people he loves that the ones who made them sad were wrong. Nothing changes when you stare down at your feet. You can't burn a hole out of the ground no matter how long you look at it, so please keep your head up and your eyes is he just reading from the light novel right now? Because I'm like, bro, your scripts are very, like, beautiful. It's very poetic. But th 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 this sounds like straight up out of the light novel. He's in front of you. Then, at the very end, he finally reveals that he is Natsuki Subaru, the spirit user who defeated the witch cult Archbishop of Sloth, and yeah. leave things to him and his friends. 
I would have loved a moment of like Sirius's reaction here, right? I, I really want to see the perspective of other archbishops to Subaru's speech, but again, they're so confident. They don't care. They don't care about any of this. But Sirius, you would think that would have was kind of triggered by the whole sloth things. This scene is fantastic, and it displays the heroic reveries of Natsuki Subaru. Someone who knows he can't do this, someone who is about to crumble, but he'll do it anyway. Because he is the hero that saved Rem. I especially love the red light analogy he used for Aldebaran in their conversation. It's not a question for him. He won't even think twice about being a hero, but now he's really gone and done it. The red light example is great. Because it's like an instinctive way of telling that this is a heroism at its finest. But it's also a very convenient way of just saying that and not having to explain why you want to do it. Because again, it's an instinctual thing. You don't need to explain why you want to be a hero. But you could also assume that it's like a lazy way of like trying to cover up like the logic, the reasoning of why someone wants to be a hero. It's, it's just that simple. You see someone cross the street. They're about to get killed by a truck. They're about to get isekai'd. You step in. But it's also funny how a similar situation happened in episode 1, season 1, where Subaru first gets reincarn not reincarnated, summoned here, and we see a kid that's about to get run over by some dragon carrots, and Subaru at that time, rather than jumping in to save, was like, oh, maybe I have a new isekai magic power. Uh-oh, didn't happen. And someone else had to jump in and, you know, save the kid. Just how much more can Subaru shoulder until he truly cracks? What makes- Well, Subaru has cracked many times. We see him get destroyed in season 2 multiple times, right? I'm sure it's just going to be a repeated process of breaking down and building himself up, right? Taking too much burden on himself and ultimately, you know, destroying himself, but then you have other people to lift you up. There's a beautiful, you know, um, beautiful scene in the end of season 3 ending where Subaru is like barely up, but you see everyone else push him up and you have also Reinhardt kind of like drag him up by the collars like a fucking mama, mama dog picking up like a dog, like, a, like our pet. But all these different symbolism shows that like, yes, from the beginning, Subaru has been trying to do shit alone and he's getting better at doing together. But when he falls, he's got other people to rely on and as he, you know, moves forward together. So it's like the burden, the load, the weight, this, everything from heroic delusions, we're not unfamiliar with it. It's just like we've been doing it over and over and over again. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to keep happening. What makes this heroic angle especially interesting is that, to me, this episode feels like a sequel to the iconic episode 18 of season 1. Hmm. A scene where Subaru had entirely given up. A scene where his legs did give out. That's right. Episode 18. That was the Rem speech and Subaru speech. And Subaru's saying, I want to give up. But it's just like, you know, giving up, you know, it's not the way you're supposed to live for yourself. You're supposed to be a hero. You're, you're like, it's like the perception of yourself being so bad and other people saying like, you're my hero. And then him moving forward. Where he no longer had any fight in him. Giving up was the hardest thing for him to do. And the only thing that pulled him out of that darkness was someone being there to tell him to look up and keep his eyes forward. That giving up doesn't suit him. Despite how badly he wants to give up, he knows he can't because people are relying on him. And he wants to impart the same sentiment on other people. The same kind of words that saved him over a year ago. Giving up doesn't suit you. Have other people be your strength and keep looking forward. What I especially love is him saving his name for the end. Rather than coming down on them as an authoritative figure, he mm. met them on their level. That's something Natsuki Subaru is absolutely great at. True, right? He didn't introduce himself as, you know, Subaru. And I wanted some sort of reaction from everyone else too when he said his name. Because even though maybe people aren't aware of what he looks like, You've already seen Liliana's reaction to Subaru, right? He is a legend right now. His name is spreading across not just Lagunica, but to neighboring continents too, right? I, I hope that people will be like, holy shit, it's him. It's him. Just a little bit more glaze, but that didn't happen. He put himself as a person first before being a knight. It also ties into the stuff I've been talking about all core, about how important names are. During mm. the section of his speech in which he was the least confident in himself, he didn't give up his name, but during the most inspiring segment, he finally gives it up, his title, and his accomplishment. Not only did Subaru talk them into feeling hope, he talked himself into it too, getting ready to establish the final matchups of the- That's a great way to put it. He talked himself into it too, glazing himself by, you know, stating everything he did on his resume to give himself hope and motivation, yeah. Watergate City of Pristella. We see cuts of Amelia in 184 throughout this episode, as 184 and the other wives have given up in the face of regular suppression, but that speech speaks particularly to Amelia's heart. 
184 reveals her past. Regulus coming through to kill everyone that knew her face or name. Mm -hmm. 184 was in a way hoping for salvation with Amelia running away, to have this come to an end. Every day they live with the terror of constant death. Just how much courage does it take to live like that? 184 asks who that- That's why she was so ready to just die, and she was smiling. Voice was, and she tells her that was her night, and she won't run. She won't leave them all behind. She wants to make all of them happy because marriage is a ceremony to become happy with a person you treasure. She is against such unhappy relationships. 184 tells her to do whatever she plans to do on her own, but Emily rejects that. She was never alone. Let's do this wedding. Subaru okay. wipes the sweat on his brow, realizing the room had gone quiet. Anastasia can't help but ask if he was a former con artist, remarking- <laughs> Former con artist is the first thing you say after the speech is so good? That's a, that's a compliment, though. It is. In the uh, show business, right? It's all about lip service, silver tongue, knowing how to yap, knowing how to compel, you know, people, knowing how to convince them how to, you know, join your side. So Subaru talking like a snake oil salesman, a con artist. Yeah, that's, that's a compliment. ...how he just ignored the speech draft she gave him. And Julia says the identity reveal was supposed to be at the start, but it was splendid. Really? There was a draft that Anastasia gave? Identity was supposed to be at the start, but it was left till the end. Really? Help but ask if he was a former con artist, remarking how he just ignored the speech draft she gave him. I didn't even know there was a speech draft. There was whole like segments of where he's supposed to do it, but Subaru is like um intuition to leave out the identity till the end again, right? Rather than meeting them with authority, but rather leaving that till the end to build hype for not just the audience but for himself too. And Julia says the identity reveal was supposed to be at the start, but it was splendid. Aldebron seems to be avoiding him, looking away and moving to the corner. Yeah, Al had a very sassy look. And from the beginning, he was all just like, I'm not about this shit, this is lame. And during the speech, he was like, oh shit, he's doing it. And at the end, I think he himself knows that, yep, the speech was good. Now, him looking away, is it because, obviously it's because of everything that he was saying leading up to it, right? The heroic delusions. Other people also, you know, taking the L along with you, you know, it's, it's okay to run away. It's okay to, you know, let's uh, run away and just save the one thing that you have. But I guess Al, I wonder if he can be a converted member, if he can be a believer of the church of Natsuki Subaru. Corner of the room seemingly lost in thought. They begin to discuss how they'll kick the witch cult's asses and how they'll take over the four control towers, but they're low on cards and pieces to play. Yeah, we have no actual plan though, by the way. It's so funny how we inspired hope in everybody, but we have no actual plan. Well, the plan is simple. Reinhardt's back. Let Reinhardt do his thing. Beat the Archbishops. Easy. Then, how about adding a trump card to the field? Subaru spins around to find Otto. Oh, when shit. When asked what he meant by trump card, he says he brought someone else. As Reinhard von Astrea enters the room. Yeah. It's late, but he's going to be joining them now. Motherfucker, always showing up late. But hey, he's the ultimate hero, right? And here it is, the, uh, the title, like the most ancient of heroes, which is supposed to be the Von Austria, you know, Sword Saint lines, with Reinhardt being the most, you know, uh, the current Sword Saint, as well as, you know, the most recent hero, which could be Natsuki Subaru. And Subaru, I think, is also the triple threat, full stack, because Subaru is also a hero. He is a sage candidate, and he also has dragon blood in him, which is all three things that was supposed to make up the seal for Satala, so... Subaru, there's, there's something going on there of him just being all three in one. Reinhardt's aura was also really cool. When he showed up and you could see like some sort of like distortion of the space as, you know, his hair, everything is floating upwards. And he's like, sorry, I'm late. Like, oh my God, it was pretty hype. I just hope that he'll actually deliver rather than him being benched with some new creative way to remove an OP character out of the story because Nagatsuki Tape is, he's a... Uh, repeat offender of bringing super OP characters into the story and having very creative ways to prevent them from solving all of her problems. Because if that happened, it wouldn't be fun. It's lazy writing to just have Reinhardt solve everything. But right now, right now, I think is a good moment for him to pop off just a bit. This episode had a few changes I was not a big fan of as a novel reader and as an Aldebron Glazer, but the speech is one of my favorite scenes in ReZero, and as usual, Natsuki Super's voice actor delivers a killer performance, and I hope this episode goes down as some people's favorite. Now yeah, that we're great. going to be setting up some potential matchups, feel free to leave some comments in the comment section below about who you think will be facing who.
there is a little bit of cut content in this episode, mainly being from Aldebaran, as per mm-hmm. usual. Credit words do, though. I'm pretty sure the speech is in there word for word from the novels. When Al initially enters the city hall, in the anime, he just basically goes, hey, what's up? But in the novels, when he enters, he remarks that that mentality of Subarus is what makes him no good. Those heroic reveries that will swallow a crowd whole. The entire air of the room is... Remember, not heroic delusion, heroic reveries. ...is entirely different from the novels. There is basically no trust for Al, who has been MIA for basically the entire attack on the city, and when yep. Al comes in telling Subaru about a message from Amelia, he doesn't trust him at all. Huh. He asks why he and Garfield got here at the same time, to which Garfield says that he was running around the city frantically looking for Subaru's scent, thinking he found it, only to stumble upon Aldebaran. Brother. <sighs> How many more misdirections are you going to give me? We, he, he, the Garfield was looking for Subaru's scent, and he ran across. Al- C- come on, now the scent here could be more of both from being Japan as isekai characters, right? Maybe it's that this isn't a scent that's supposed to be identical to Subaru, but rather some sort of scent that beings from beyond the Great Waterfall may share. This is so troll. Now in the anime, we see exactly how Al got a hold of the conversation mirror, and believe it or not, novel readers still do not know how he got a hold of it. So, we got an overarching mystery solved in the anime, which I can't say I'm too big on. Okay. The following conversation takes place without knowing how he got it, but Subaru begins to question Al on how he managed to get into contact with Amelia, and Aldebaran's only answer is that he just so happened to stumble across a conversation mirror. Mm. The stars just so happened to align, he puts it. Yeah, the, novel, the stars. You have no idea if this is true or not, and Subaru's narration states that he doesn't really believe him, but he knows that pressing him on it would amount to nothing, because he's never going to give him a straightforward answer. This was cut because we saw the answer on how he got it in the anime, so having all the suspicion around Al would undercut the suspicion he is supposed to have. The final cut comes from Otto and Reinhardt's entrance. Otto's entrance was trimmed significantly. In the novels, he enters the room saying he didn't know he had a hero for a friend, and it basks in the joy of everyone being glad to see him okay. okay. Then he mentions he heard they were running out of pieces. Of- I still think Otto is sus. The whole Otto is Pandora theory is so stupid, but like, I'm down for stupid theories. I think Otto is, is, is very suspicious. Not in the same degree as Al. It's more of like meme suspicion at this point. Al is like serious suspicion. Otto is just like memeing. We're just memeing on him saying he's sus. The play, and he didn't walk in with him because it would have spoiled his triumphant return. And then Reinhardt von Australia enters the room. That will be it for this video. All Let right. me know in the comments what you guys thought of this bombastic episode. It was a very bombastic episode indeed. Does he have a little bit more at the end? What is this? Thank you so much for watching. If you- it's glazing. And that's pretty much it. The whole notion of Alice Subaru, Asarata does not believe in it. And rather than being an identical person from a different timeline, he's simply supposed to represent everything that Subaru perhaps could have been in a different, you know, different world where maybe he just kind of went down the Roswell ideology. Protect the one thing that you hold dear to your heart and save, you know, and forget about everything else. But the heroic reverie, the heroic delusions, the way he speaks out from his heart, Something so painful, something that may have even happened to him in the past and trying to prevent Subaru from the exact same thing happening here, I think is still what's going on. The Garfield smelling Al thing, that smells just like Subaru, that's also another stupid fucking misdirection troll. Uh, maybe it is just, you know, beyond the great waterfall scent, but if not, like, ugh, this is so fucking troll, but hey, please go give Mr. Asser out there a like on the video. Check out his content if you haven't. Here's the link, and I'll see you guys next time.